I'm Evie Batson and I have a Scottish Terrier. I was an absolute dog beginner. I have a little Westie, which is just like a cat. So I knew nothing really about dogs. And I saw this Scottish Terrier somewhere and I thought when I have another dog, this is what I'm gonna get. And as I was researching, I saw these people showing on crafts and I thought, this is what I'm going to do. All right, um, well, I searched far and wide in all of Europe, called every breeder that there was, until I finally located a new litter, and that was actually close to home. And since it was COVID day, I got to pick the best of the litter. And I said, I want the strongest and all of the above. Okay, they let me have it because nobody could travel and, and pick up dogs, and so they were happy to whatever. Okay, and we had a fantastic summer. We traveled Spain and Portugal, and the dog had a blast. And autumn came, and the dog got to be six, let me think about seven, eight, nine months old, and he turned into a monster. There was over the summer no dog training for COVID reasons. I had zero instruction other than what I found on, on YouTube or the usual channels. And it got desperate. Um, eventually, things open up, and I went to see an animal behaviorist who told me that the breeder should have not <laughs> produced this monster because they put the wrong uh, strings together and so forth. And, but I wanted to show this dog, so I took him out on shows, and I, you know, I looked up on the internet how to do this, and this is basically how I started. And eventually the breeders started their own workshops and they said you have to string him up high and you have to control the dog and boom. And if he doesn't behave, you give him three jolts and he will know. And I did. And eventually in the street, he was unmanageable. He became a wild animal. He was, I believe, actually dangerous. Um, so nobody in the family wanted to walk him anymore. It was unpleasant, it was scary. We did just the little bit of poo quickly and pee quickly and go back home. And I thought, this can't be it. I was gonna have a dog to have fun. And now I'm isolated to go where I see nobody. And um, every trainer I tried thereupon told me I need a different leash <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not the, um, I don't speak doggish, and I'm, I'm not the alpha, and yeah, well, I figured that out by then, <laughs> but nobody could tell me how to be an alpha. So eventually things travel-wise open up again, and um, I managed to go to Eric's first workshop, which was still a disaster. Okay, when you're ready, bring the Scotty in, please. Try to get connected with that hand. Good treat. Ooh, there it is. There it is. Beautiful. Shake your hand. Let him eat a buffet. <laughs> get, get a treat in that nose, or let him just eat the pile of food either way. <laughs> Shake that hand. Good. Okay, get connected and take them around quickly. Stop your eye contact. Stand up. Let out some lead. Keep going. Keep going. There it is. Go follow mom. There it is. Good, good, good. Go with it. Go with it. Go with it. Go with it. Yay, now do head straight. Don't let him pee. Good job. Now look at me, okay? When you're working with this dog, you're like right here in the dog's face. I'm gonna get it in front of his face. I know. Come on, ah, uh -uh. over, good, good. 
Very nice. Back up. Back, back, back. Good. Stay. Uh Uh-uh. Stay. This way. Good. Over here. What happened? This way. Good. Okay, over here. Come on. Yeah, good, 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 good. Very nice. Very nice. Good. Wait. Here goes. Good. Uh -uh. Very good. This way. Uh -uh. Good. Uh -uh 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 -uh. This way. What happened? What happened to the baby? Good. You see the difference in body posture? I wasn't in his face. No, go. I just let him run into the leash. Then he stop. Then he stops, not you. Okay, put him away. Ah, oh, you my baby. You're so perfect. Come on, let's go. What happened? I know. Come on, this way. Practice your head straight. See how easy this dog is trained? This way. Wait. Over here. Wait. Good. 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 Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, that's so good. Yes, it is. Good. Good job. Okay, let's go over to mom. Good. Good. Stop the eye contact. At the end of the workshop, I got invited to come for private lessons. And I figured if I want to enjoy this dog for the rest of my life, I must turn this around. And this, this has, it's a beautiful dog. He is sweet as can be at home. Just when he is in presence of other dogs, he was not behaving. And so here I am and to learn what it is to connect to the animal. And how, how do I do it? How do I go about it? It's not the jolts. It's not stringing him up. It's not controlling him. This dog is not controllable. I must meet him at his level. And so to play with a purpose, I finally learned to connect to my dog. And the dog thanked me <laughs> big time. The dog loved it. And we were having fun for the first time. We were having real fun, and it, could, it, it showed to everything. And yes, then the dog would follow me. He would do what I asked him to do, because to him, it was recognizing his abilities. Um, so from, from connecting through fun, um, I lost my fear of, of doing anything with that dog. And one can then play and, and then walking uh, the up and down and back is not a big deal. <laughs> Most people know how to walk. It's just walking to bring out the dog. The difference is this is not instruction on dog handling. This is the art of bringing out the character of the breed and making it shine as it was intended to. So it cannot be taught. Eric doesn't teach. Eric brings it out in people. And then the dog will naturally take the stage and fascinate people, and hopefully judges, um, about what it is to be a Scottish Terrier in my case. The American standard looks at the character of the breed for its virtues, what can be shown, not so much for its faults. And disqualified dogs 
by their faults, which is the European way. Uh, it's, it's definitely much more fun and I think artistic to present the, the breed in, in its glory and not look for, well, this is a low this and this is short there and, and things like that. So I'm looking forward to winning. <laughs> And um, to the extent that I come from being a total beginner to reach the league of the bigger players, that would to me be just fantastic. I've been trained a classical dancer. It's not doing the bar and doing the movement and doing the steps. If somebody wants to be a soloist, <laughs> he, has to, he has to become the character not just do the pirouette and the this and the that. Many, many people can do that. But to, to be the character and to, to bring out the emotions in people is the art of, in this case, dancing. And it is the same for a show dog. Otherwise, it's mere you know, walking up and down, down and back or else or complicated patterns. <laughs> But that is not what it's all about. So to me, this was the greatest revelation. And I had the time of my life. <laughs> I had to first see what I really don't know. To begin to, to understand that I had just no entry in this game. Mm. I could see, well, I would also like to point out that the, the people were incredibly comforting and understanding and tolerant of a, of a crazy dog that barks all the time. And so they made an effort to encourage me and to support me and to, to keep up the belief it can be done. That, that I think in this game is the most important thing, that, that we, we stay very positive. And it's disappointing. Even at that workshop, the dog bit me. And um, everybody, you know, says, that's how it is. You, you must move on. And you, I, I like that. And Eric gave me a big hug and said, you know, let's we'll work this out. The biggest challenge in training, I do think that we, we get things in our lives to overcome our weaknesses. I'm, I just did not practice enough with that dog. My biggest challenge is to be very consistent uh, in training, just like a dancer does the bar every day, rain or shine or <laughs> whatever, and, and to always keep that at a very high level and perfect and perfect and perfect and prepare for any situation that can arise. I think that's, we must put in the time. <laughs> If I do it right, if I do it perfectly, the dog does it perfectly. I don't think the dog changed, I think I changed. Um, I, I meet him at his level. I mean, he, I can read him better. I respect him more, definitely. I can touch him a lot more where he was very iffy in the past. Those are, I think the most important things, he listens better, he comes better, he, he obeys better. I do think that Eric can bring it out of anybody to train their dog. It's magic. <laughs> That's all I can say, it's magic. It, and it's, it is such a deep joy that, that, that I think having a dog and getting to that point it's so rewarding, it's just fascinating. In Tampa, I first learned to really play with the dog and connect him to me. I mean, it was still a, a very weak threat. The dog was still all over the place and checking out what all these other dogs might do. Um, but I, I could see there was, for longer stretches of time, I could have him focus at me and then he would wander off and he'd have to go to his cage. Um, but I, I knew this is not the dog. It, I, somewhere I have to find this place. 
in myself how to get to that point. And that's um, what we were working on. And, um, and I knew it, 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 it's got to be in that direction. The dog has to like what we're doing. It's not about I'm the leader and I'm going to... It doesn't happen there. <laughs> the dog has to want to be with me. And I think that, that, that broke while we were in Tampa. Left dogs in any, with a lot of hair in any case were always our biggest problem. Um, they became irrelevant in a way that he figured they're not that interesting to, to attack or bark at or there were other things that were more fun. We can, we can play. And I think that's how he mostly mm, steered clear of those and eventually he played with them without attacking them. And so he's looking. I think there is the difference. I have to be his, his guide. I have to be uh, and also responsible for things, not just dominate him. That's, to me, what my role should be. It, it was like this. When you go in a car, you turn the key, you're 100% driving. You could never for a second let up because you either run over somebody or... And it was like this with the dog. I would, the moment I put the leash on the dog, I was on high alert all the time and, and never could enjoy a walk with the dog. It was always very tight. Um, and then when we came here, the, the first, the second day or something, there was a dog outside, not very far from where I parked the car. And I thought, oh no, here we go again. How am I going to get through this? And it was my, always my reaction. Well, and he didn't even notice the dog. He just completely ignored him. He was with me. He was going. It, it didn't matter because at least normally he would up and he would look and he would decide what to do. Didn't matter, it was not a subject. And that was so, <sighs> yeah, we're getting there, it's happening. That's what, what was so beautiful about this. What I have defined for myself, if I want to train this dog, it's not tying a leash to him and then sort of hope that he learns what I do and then, it, I have to do this without a leash. I have to completely communicate with my body and my hand so he knows exactly what I want from him. There was never this clarity. We were always sort of hoping kind of mm, a little bit like you do the same thing and hope for a different outcome. It doesn't happen. You have to communicate a hundred percent with the dog and clarify all the movement. That's what I think is, I'm still missing tremendously, but I understand it. And then attaching a lead to the dog and then do the same thing, but that he exactly knows, that's then easy for the dog. But without all this, this body language and, and hand signals and a communication that is not, has nothing to do with the lead, that's the issue. And well, it's practice. Lots of it. You can see that the dog knows how to do it. Um, it's for the handler to to adjust the strides, and if I walk the clear, the, the correct lines, then my dog follows exactly my lead and can do the perfect thing. It's <laughs> the perfect gait. In, with the legs in line, with the convergence, with all of the things, it's for me to, not for the dog to learn, it's for me to learn to, to perform exactly in, in the right speed and in the right direction. And that I can learn without the dog. I can learn that with walking the leash without the dog. So that was a, a, a great revelation to me. It's not the dog that has to learn. <laughs> It's I have to learn to walk at the right speed or in the right direction. I enjoyed that tremendously. That, that makes it so much easier 
Um, and then you can play with the dog instead of always walking the dog in a straight line. That's not the dog's job. <laughs> That's my job.